by far the most important thing today. Not only today, but in a historical perspective, the most important thing is to make sure that a militant regime, a militant Islamic regime or a militant Islamic movement does not get its hands on the weapons of mass destruction. Missiles cloud Mideast skies over the Persian Gulf. Iran shuts down the Strait of Hormuz. Arab oil is choked off to world markets. Hezbollah and Hamas launch scores of missiles into Israel. Terror cells initiate cycles of violence in America. About 2,600 years ago, the Hebrew prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel issued parallel end times prophecies concerning modern day Iran. Today, the rogue country is becoming a nuclear nation and aggressively advancing its hegemony throughout the greater Middle East. Nuclear Showdown in Iran, revealing the ancient prophecy of Alam, is a non-fiction thriller taking the reader on a journey of discovery through the eyes of the prophets and the minds of today's key national players. But there's a backstory, an even bigger story. It's a spiritual showdown in Iran between Islam and Christianity. Iran is being transformed into a Christian nation in this generation. Iran has the fastest growing evangelical population in the world. Iranians are experiencing miracles, healings, visions and dreams. And with the help of satellite television, millions of them are coming to Christ. Two years ago, Iranian government began cracking down on Christianity. But it's not working. Christianity is growing in Iran. Iran is in the Bible prophecy, and many Iranian Christians are excited about what the Bible says about the future of Iran. Please pray for your brothers and sisters in Iran. Pick up your copy of Nuclear Showdown in Iran, revealing the ancient prophecy of Alam. The video clip you've just seen illustrates the gravity of what's happening in the Middle East right now. You, you see the passion and concern uh, on the face of Benjamin Netanyahu. You see the building crisis uh, that, that's taking place over there right now. Well, uh, sitting beside me is, is a man who has devoted considerable study to what's going on in the Middle East right now, and he's done it from a perspective that, that nobody else has. Two books, Nuclear Showdown in Iran, Psalm 83, have encapsulated the events in the Middle East, I think, as no other set of studies has. And, of course, my guest is author and lecturer Bill Solis. Hi, Bill. Gary, great time to share some important information with your audience. Now, we've got a few minutes here uh, to talk about something that I think is very important. And there is a building crisis in the Middle East. We don't think it's going to be long at all before something really critical happens there. And you've got special insight into developments there. Uh, we have various power groups rising. We have the Ayatollahs, we have something called ISIS, we have various tribal groups lifting up their heads, and it's so difficult to know the truth about what's happening. Uh, you have a very special take on it based upon the study you put in to, uh, to create your materials. So kind of fill us in on where you are uh, in your mind. Well, I'd like to present your viewers with, it's a speculative scenario, but it's not that far-fetched is how I would talk about it. And it's not, it's coming from a biblical perspective. The prophecies of Jeremiah 49 in the Nuclear Showdown book and the prophecies of Psalm 83 in the Psalm 83 book, I think they're gonna kinda come together. Which one's gonna come first, I don't know yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a scenario by you because I think it's real-time application for your viewers to look at. Now, we're not trying to do any newspaper exegesis and take uh, current events and marry them up with scriptures, and we want to qualify that. But we're going to sit here and talk about something that really could happen in the very near future, very near future. Wow. Okay, now, Israel has to deal with Iran's nuclear program. Benjamin Netanyahu, as you saw in that video, he is concerned that is the elephant in the room in the Middle East. ISIS is a problem, but Benjamin Netanyahu is continually coming out and saying, you need to be concerned about Iran. He has said even to caution America with their ICBM program, Internet, Inter 
Continental Ballistic Missiles Program that they're developing rapidly and their nuclear program that by 2015, the East Coast of America could technically be struck by Iran with a nuclear weapon. That's a very alarming threat. Israel's concerned because they can already strike Iran with a nuclear weapon with the missile technologies they have. Yeah. So they've been waiting for the midterm elections, November 4th, to come and go and to sway Republican. And we know that happened. Yes. They've been waiting for the nuclear negotiations on November 24th to fall short or come up empty. And they did. Iran has been negotiating their way to a nuclear weapon. Right now, the, the ingredients are in line for an, a strike from Israel upon Iran. And I think that might be what Jeremiah's prophecy is dealing with, is a nuclear strike on Iran. Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 34 through 39. Now, if they strike right now, they will get generally more favoritism because the swaying of the Republicans in America, more American support. It doesn't necessarily mean America is going to come alongside and fight against Iran. That would only happen if American interests were severely threatened or something like that. I'm not looking to that, but I'm looking to Israel striking Iran. They were waiting for the nuclear negotiations to conclude. They're going to extend them out a little further, whatever. But now if they did strike Iran, they could say, look, we gave you ample time. We can't sit here and wait around for Iran to get a nuclear weapon while you guys dilly-dally around and try to figure out what you're going to do. Now, if that happens, Iran is going to probably make good on their threats. Hezbollah's got 100,000 missiles to the north of Israel. I, Israel is already preparing to deal with Hezbollah like they had to deal with Hamas this past summer in 2014. Those missiles flying into Israel, Iran's got a, a formidable arsenal of missiles that could fly into Israel. Syria and Hamas, although they're mitigated at this point in time for various reasons, they are also proxies of Iran. You would probably see several things happen in response to Iran. They've already said they would do this if they get struck at their nuclear mm -hmm. program. And you would see an apocalyptic war coming into Israel at this point in time. Israel's Iron Dome system would not be able to fend that off. They would be, they would be lashing out in what I, I call a prison rules fight. It's a matter of life or death for Israel. And I think you're going to see nuclear weapons enter the theater. Israel's worst kept secret is nuclear weapons. They've got, we think, about 200 of them. Which gets very interesting when you talk about Isaiah 17, verse 1, the destruction of Damascus. Yes. It says, Damascus will cease from being a city, it will be a ruinous heap. So I then believe what will happen is you're going to have an all-out war going on, and that is then going to take ISIS. What about ISIS? Okay. Well, right now, President Obama has a coalition put together, pinpricking uh, shots and trying to, you know, missiles coming down on ISIS. And I think once you see that uh, Iran is escalating into some kind of issue, probably a nuclear disaster, some of the members of Obama's coalition are probably going to go over to take care of their own populations. You've got Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, and the UAE, UAE rather. They will go over there because their countrymen are going to be in serious trouble because of that Bashar nuclear plant over there. It's a nuclear disaster waiting to happen. So um, I, I'm, I, we can play this out a little bit more, but I'm really thinking at this point in time, ISIS is going to get a free ride if there's some kind of major conflict going on. You're going to see more terrorist, splinter terrorist Sunni organizations that are already aligning with ISIS. Matter of fact, the King of Jordan is over here while we're taping this right now, speaking to uh, President Obama, mm -hmm. and he is warning him of the very thing I'm telling you, you and your viewers right now, that the differences between the Al-Qaeda, the Hamas, and the other terrorist organizations that are Sunni and ISIS are minuscule. And they, they see in ISIS right now a opportunity to have that Islamic caliphate, Sunni-led Islamic caliphate. They can taste it. They can feel it. And, and they'll all have their own personal interests in that. Hamas will want to wipe Israel off the map. Um, Al-Qaeda will want to have their say-so in this whole power struggle. But we're going to see, I believe, we're going to see them shed their differences and align with ISIS and ultimately unite with ISIS. And we're going to see, I think, at that point in time, the makings of a Psalm 83 confederacy, that Arab-Israeli conflict that ultimately comes against Israel to destroy them. Uh, a whole lot more to say about this, Gary, but any comments so well, far? And at some point, uh, some kind of a nuclear catastrophe will have to break forth, as described in the Bible. Uh, interestingly, that, that video cl clip we ran at the beginning uh, of this uh, update it talks about God calling out a people for his name right there in Persia. Last place on earth you would expect such a thing to happen. And you know, 
there, there's something very, very uh, evocative for me about that. It, it's as though the Lord is, is preparing people for, for something that's just on the horizon. He's preparing people there in Persia. And, and the fact that, that he does have people there who are receiving Christ and who are beginning to function uh, as, as followers of Jesus suggests that time is very, very short. I read that the same way, Gary. I believe that this outpouring of the Spirit uh, with the dreams, the visions, the miracles, the healings that's going on, being connected to the satellite television of some of the ministries going into Iran and Afghanistan, um, God's taking matters into his own hands here. You know, we, they don't have the opportunity to go with 10 Bibles on their counter and go to the local church. Those home churches are shut down. Those, yeah. prison, those pastors are in prison. I believe God is in this final hour accomplishing his will, which is to bring so many people into the family of God through Jesus Christ, because uh, we are dealing with the most urgent time ever. And ISIS is nothing more or less than a, a, a hundred-year-old dream. Ever since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, it's a hundred-year-old dream to reestablish the empire. And that's what's on their mind. You, you don't have to be a genius to figure that out. Uh, although, I don't think they're going to have a happy ending. I don't think ISIS is really going to be able to do what they want to do. In fact, probably the exact opposite is going to happen. The kingdom uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be set up instead, and uh, that's going to last for a thousand years. I think we're close to all of these things beginning to happen in, in one, two, three, four, five order, you know? Yeah, I agree. And the good news is we do know the end of the story. We do. That Israel will prevail because the God of Israel has made promises to Abraham that go through the Israeli people. And also we are grafted into that same covenant, you know, so we our salvation is also through that God, through Jesus Christ. So we know the end of the story. But, you know, don't for a second think, dear viewer, that, that things are just going to tone down and the end of the story is going to happen overnight. Big things are happening in the Middle East right now, and they will affect your life. The Strait of Hormuz could be shut down through which 30% of the world's oil comes through. That could happen immediately in the aftermath of a strike on Iran's nuclear program. Iran has said they will do that. That would affect your life. You could have a global economic crisis going on. I mean, the list could go on, Gary, but Good. I do believe that the ISIS is a scenario that could fit into Psalm 83 if they continue to burgeon. Um, and I do believe that Iran is in Jeremiah 49, chapters 34, verses 34 through 39, dealing with Elam. And, you know, when the viewers are watching the news channels, mainstream news, these things are coming up more and more frequently. And they're getting the military and the geopolitical perspectives. But what you're going to offer with them with these products here is the biblical perspective of what you're seeing going on right now in the Middle East. Bill Salas, author of nuclear showdown in Iran. And before that, Psalm 83. Of course, uh, we have uh, Bill's books and DVDs right here on the Prophecy Watchers website. One click takes you right to them. Uh, spend a little more time with Bill. Read his books. Take time to digest his ideas. Uh, and by the way, they're very well thought out, very detailed. And, and I think it's going to raise your eyebrows as to what's really happening in the Middle East today. Bill, always really good to talk to you. Come again as soon as you can. Thanks for having me, Gary. And thanks for joining us today on Prophecy Watchers. Keep watching, everybody.